Welcome, everybody, to GM Junior's second podcast of the night. Um, this time we're looking at some offensive players in college football that we are already graded off 2015 film. We're going to give you a little bit of insight into what we saw, what we liked, what we didn't like, and what we think they need to improve upon as seniors or as juniors, as the case may be in some of their cases, um, if they're going to really get drafted as highly as the media is talking about. Um, we're going to throw it over to uh, Rick Stavik, um, former SEC football player, also played at Shippensburg, um, to give us his thoughts on an offensive player. So, Rick, the ball is in your court. Thanks, Russ. Uh, one guy that I've been very impressed with on the offensive side of the ball is Alabama's tight end, O.J. Howard. Uh, he's another former big-time recruit, just like everyone else at Alabama. Uh, and he's really come a long way in developing. He was very raw. He played at a very small high school. So he had a long ways to go when he got to Alabama. And his first two and a half years, really, he didn't produce much. He got some playing time just because of his natural athletic ability, but he didn't. He wasn't a focal point of the offense. At the second half of last season, especially in the national championship game, he really put his skills on display. He's a great big guy. He's a physical phenomenon. He's 6'6", 240, probably going to run under a 4'640". He's got a huge wingspan. He's a red zone nightmare. He has the speed and athleticism to play wide receiver, and he's got the strength and footwork to play offensive line, making him a prototypical tight end. Uh, one thing that kind of makes me a little nervous so far is he's not a great route runner. He's very raw. He struggles reading coverages and trying to find the soft spot in the secondary. But I, I think the, the more he continues to, to grow in Alabama's offense and the more looks and touches he gets, I think the better he'll become. He's also... He was very raw as a blocker. He's come a long way. He's greatly improved. Now he's an adequate blocker. He still has, he still has the, a ways to go in that regard as well. Still, considering his athleticism and upside, he could be a superstar at the next level. Mike, what do you think? Uh, well, I actually remember watching O.J.'s high school film, and he was pretty impressive for a guy that size. So I uh, lo love seeing the fact that he's improved and uh, love to see where he goes from here as a senior year. So uh, I got Shock Linwood for us tonight. Uh, he's five foot eight, 200 pounds, well built for a guy that small, uh, being the fact that I'm kind of short and a little bit chubby myself. So, uh, But the guy's got a compact build. He doesn't shy away from contact. He's actually, for a guy that short, he actually is better in between the tackles, which is kind of rare. Uh, but the one biggest concern for a person like him is the fact that he doesn't have that elite burst to run away from people uh, and to get that edge uh, at, the, at the next level. Uh, but his vision and patience allows him to be able to work in that short area uh, between the tackles. He's going to pick up chunks of yards, but he's never going to run away from the defenders down the field. Uh, when he does get into the open field, he consistently does a spin move but it's a little sloppy. So in college it works. In the NFL, he's going to get lit up. So he needs to find a better way to work well in open space. The biggest concern and the thing that I could see that really holds him back in the future is he is a horrible pass blocker. He consistently just dives at the defender and misses or just slightly clips him and really puts his quarterback in danger. Uh, so really as a floor as a ceiling type of a player, he's a rotational back. He's just going to be, you know, going to pick you up some, uh, you know, tough yardage, which is surprising for a guy that small or just chunks of yardage. But he really could wash out after a couple of years in the league if he can't find a way to protect the passer um, because he does have the ability to be uh, somewhat effective in the pass game as a, as a you know, just a swing uh, catcher type of a person. Um, see him as a six-rounder. I know I've seen people talk about you know, third, fourth, fifth-round type guy. If he goes any higher than the sixth, you're really kind of stretching what he can do. So uh, that's what I got on Chuck with tonight. Russ, what you got going? You know, to me, I think every year going into the season, there are so many players that are hyped as potentially the first overall pick, the slam dunk best player at their position, and already we're seeing that with Deshaun Watson, the quarterback out of Clemson. So I was really excited to sit down and chart him out look at all his throws, and evaluate him as a football player to figure out, is he the great quarterback everybody's been talking about? Because when you watch the games, you see the highlights. You don't really see the player. And oftentimes when I look at these guys that are so hyped, I throw on the film and I'm very disappointed. But every once in a while, you put on the film of a guy like Cam Newton, and he jumps out. He's tremendous. He's an outstanding football player. 
Unfortunately, in Deshaun Watson's case, I was mightily disappointed. To say that I think he is a long-term developmental project would be an understatement because he grades out as one of the least accurate quarterbacks I've ever graded. He is so fundamentally bad in terms of footwork and throwing. I don't know if he's a guy who can be built into a quarterback. Um, I love his athleticism. I think he actually has decent upper body mechanics in terms of release quickness. He has a strong enough arm, but his accuracy is terrible. His footwork is way off, and he doesn't feel comfortable sitting in the pocket. He's a quick read, get rid of the ball type guy, doesn't go through his progressions. I don't think this guy is ready for the NFL. And after I did all this work, I said, wow, is it just me? Am I being crazy? So I called around to a handful of NFL people I know. Most of them hadn't looked at him yet. But one guy in particular that I've known for almost 20 years said, Russ, he goes, I went in there during two days this year. And he, he told me, he said, Russ, he said, I don't think he's an NFL quarterback. He said he'll get drafted because he's going to work out so tremendously. And he's such a great kid. And he's going to do well when you interview him. But he said, Russ, he said the accuracy, just like you said, he goes, that's the issue. He said, this kid cannot throw the ball accurately. And if you can't be accurate, you can't play in the NFL. So if he can greatly improve his accuracy, tremendously improve his footwork, maybe he has a chance, in my eyes, of being a high draft pick. But in my opinion right now, he's a sixth, seventh round player who's a long shot to ever be more than a sort of a schoolyard quarterback at the NFL level. Really disappointed when I saw him. Hopefully he improves, but I'm not going to bet on it because most schoolyard quarterbacks – do not take the steps to become fundamentally sound while they're in college. So that's going to wrap it up, folks, for tonight. Thanks for checking it out. Myself, Rick, and Mike appreciate it. And we'll be back next week breaking down some more players and giving sort of a preview because the college football season is right around the corner. Thank you all for checking us out tonight. And please email us. Send us your thoughts. Tell us about players you'd like us to take a look at and talk about. We'll be happy to do so. Thank you.